Hey there my gorgeous friends on the internet, today we have a big topic to talk about, images. Most of the stuff that we consume out there on the internet is made up of either text, images, or video. So it's really important to understand how we can optimize them and load them properly and style them. Have you ever tried loading up an image and it just looks wrong and it just never listens to the way you want to do things? So you just gotta beat them up, right? It's not parenting advice. Let's get into the video. So the image tag, we all know and use it, right? It's web development one-on-one. -on -one. We know we can place an image and it takes two properties, the source and the alt. The source literally indicating where your file is, where your image is. It can be locally on your hard drive or it can be a URL from a website. So that can be inserted there and boom, you have the image. The second tag is gonna be the alt tag. And that's really, really important, just as important as the source tag, because there's people out there with visual impairment and blindness that will not be able to see the image. So you gotta make sure that you properly describe it. And please, for the love of God, don't just write car when it's a Tesla Model Y parked. That should be it. You don't wanna start beef with blind people, okay? They might not see, but once you beef with them, they have this increased sense, you know? If there's one important thing I really want you to take away from this video is the importance of compressing and resizing your images. So let's have a look at an example. There's loads of fantastic websites that you can use there for images. However, one of the most popular ones out there are Pexels and Unsplash. And the fantastic thing about these is they're usually shot with a professional camera and you also have the ability to pick different sizes, which is fantastic. But let's assume you're, you have an image and you don't have the ability to get like all of these different sizes. So we're gonna stick with the original and we're gonna see the size of this is like 2.4 megabytes. That's, that's not good. We don't wanna add that to the website. So what we can do is actually just open up Figma. It's free, pop it open in your browser or you can download it here. And as you can see, when I drag it in, the size of that is gonna be massive, right? That's a 6K resolution image. So I just wanna scale it down to the size I really want, which is around like 800 pixels. There we go, cool. So let's have that like that. Again, you can modify this, move it, kind of position it the way you want. So now we just go to export here and select JPEG. PNG is gonna give you generally a bigger size. So go for JPEG and hit export and let's do it here on the desktop. If we check now, we went from two plus megabytes down to 330 kilobytes. And here we go. So there we go, we went from 2.2 megabytes down to 300 kilobytes, and we haven't even done any compression yet. My favorite site for compressing images has to be TinyPNG. It's just so simple and so fast, and the name is PNG, but you can also do JPEG and WebP. So let's drag in this 300 kilobyte image and see how much further we can reduce it to. And there we go, look at that. We just saved 71%. So let's download that. And if you actually look at the difference between the images, you might not even be able to tell any. So as you can see, when we add a H1 here or a paragraph, the content is just gonna wrap around, right? So if it doesn't have any more space in the width, the viewport's coming off here, it's gonna just drop to a new line and keep continuing. However, an image is not gonna have that same behavior. So if I drop in this image of the dolphins, as you can see, it's just gonna stretch out to the actual size of it. So we gotta make sure on this image stack to add a width of 100% to actually constrain it to the size of our viewport. Now you can go further here, so if, if you might have it inside a div that has maybe a custom width on it, so you can do like 24 RAM, and then you can have your image size up to that. And here we can also do a height of auto, so it just resizes as it scales up and down like that. Now you might wanna have a specific height on it as well, so you might just want it to be 12 RAM, right? Forcing it to that size, maybe a bit bigger, like 18 RAM. And as you can see, that's gonna squish in your image. So for that, what you can do is opt for object fit. And if we add cover here, it's just gonna zoom that image in so it doesn't affect the aspect ratio for you. So now even if we go really small, the image is gonna be nice and clear. So there we go, we got the pictures of the dolphins mating on the screen and boom, we can brush our hands and go out for a smoke and have a party, right? Not really. Um, it does look great on desktop. However, if we go down to mobile, it'll still look great, but we're not gonna need those extra pixel densities inside a mobile view. Um, a monitor like this can output like 4K resolution easily, whereas a phone, the resolution is gonna be much, much lower. 
So what we can do is swap out the image for an even lower quality image or even swap out the image entirely to a different image. So what we're gonna do is take this image tag and actually wrap it inside a picture tag like that. And by default, the picture tag is automatically gonna default to this image right here. However, above it, we can define a source attribute right here. And this is, you could imagine it like a switch statement where we're gonna check the source and if the criteria matches, like, cause we can add a media, kind of like a media query here. And based on that, it can either skip the source and just go to the image, or this is going to evaluate true and it's going to skip this image and just load up whatever is in the source. So in this case, I'll do a source and I'll just load up an entirely different image that's smaller and vertical. Uh, and also make sure it's not source here, but source set. And here we can also define a media tag like that, where I can say something like, Hey, if my min width is around 600 pixels, then load this image up for me. Let me just change this to max width like that. And as you can see, boom, there we go. We have a nice vertical image of a dolphin now. And if we go up to a higher resolution like there, as you can see, it switches to the other picture. Now, maybe we can increase this a little bit more to something like a thousand. 280 pixels and now it's still gonna look quite nice on tablets but as soon as we reach that desktop view we can switch between the image again you can do this same for you can load up two maybe different sizes of this image if you want to keep the same that's perfectly fine the source tag is also a great way to load up images that might not be supported by all, all the browsers just because we do have a fallback here. That's our safety net. So what we can do is add a type here and say image and whatever the file format might be, right? It might be an AVIV or a WebB, whatever it is, you could just load them up here at the top and you always have the safety net down here. Cool. There might be a case where you have multiple images on your website, like this web design here, uh, where we have our first front page here with a big hero image. And then right below it, we have a gallery of images. However, when I first visit the website, I want it to be as fast as possible. So if we could not load these images up, that'd be fantastic. And there's a way you can do that. We can use lazy loading to only load up images when we're scrolling them in view. So the way we can do that is head over to our index.html. In this case, I'll choose these three images here. So I'll paste that in and hit save. As you can see on a browser refresh, we only get the first two images loaded up. Now we know there are four of them and we instructed the last three to be lazy loaded. And that's exactly what they're doing. They're not showing up. Stop paying their bills. So what's happening here? Well, essentially there's an invisible parameter that the browser sets. So as you can see, whilst I scroll past, it's gonna anticipate when those images come into the viewport and then it's gonna decide to download them and render them on the screen for us. So that's images in HTML. Hope this helped in any way. If you have any cool tricks that you can do with images, please let me know down in the comments below and I'll pin it. Uh, I also start posting original shorts on Twitter. So please drop a follow there and follow the content. Uh, I'm going to put in lots of work in that and I think you're really going to enjoy it. It's like a one minute bite size tutorials uh, about web development. So drop a follow. It's in the description. Check out the courses over at developbyad.com. I have the HTML and CSS course being rebuilt right now. So that's going to be really exciting. If you already have it, it's going to be free. All of my courses are going to be updated for free. And yeah, that's all. Thanks for all the support and get out of here.